Welcome to the Love and Lattes podcast, a coffee lover's guide to good vibes, books, rom-coms, and everything in between. Now grab some coffee and let's get chatting. Satisfy your sweet tooth with the delicious and unique chocolate bark flavors inspired by some of your favorite Hallmark Channel movies. There are so many flavors to choose from, and the newest one, Jane and the Earl, was created in honor of the Jane Austen-inspired movies only on Hallmark Channel. Head over to loveandsparks.com and order yours soon. Hello, world. I am very excited to be here. This is Eric Rutten from Hallmark Mysteries and More. Thank you for joining me today, Eric. So there's um, lots to talk about. Uh, I would love to start off um, for everyone who's listening, like how you got started, like with the podcast and the Instagram accounts, because I see from your shirt, you definitely like Hallmark. <laughs> I do. So it, it, it's kind of the funny story in that um, I was, well, just going quickly to the Hallmark, how I got into the Hallmark thing is I was just... Uh, stumbling around channel surfing and I came across Summer Villa, which is a uh, um, little spoiler alert. It may be a movie we discussed today, but um, I ended up watching it and just loved it. And I was like, this is so cute. I'm a big fan of the rom-coms, you know, I'm an eighties kid. So I had, uh, you know, all those eighties uh, movies as well as the great nineties rom-coms. So it's always been a genre that I liked. So I just started watching them and got hooked on them. And then a couple of years later, my wife was uh, traveling and I'm home alone. I'm like, you know what, just for fun, I'm going to start a Hallmark blog because, you know, I know no one will read it. I'm like pretty much the only person out there that's addicted to these things. And so I created the blog, um, which is my Hallmark reviewer. So I've got a split personality. I've got my Hallmark movie reviewer, which is the rom-com and then my Hallmark mysteries and more, which is the mystery side of me. But then, um, so I started this blog and I opened up an Instagram and I was like, whoa, blown away. Cause I found out I certainly was not alone because people like you, Betsy were, you know, there's a zillion fans who are absolute uh, in love with Hallmark movies. And so it just really kind of fell into the community and, you know, it's been an absolutely fantastic thing. Um, gotten to know a lot of, you know, fellow podcasters like yourself as well as just, you know, regular fans and also a lot of the Hallmark uh, actors and producers and writers, which I know you have as well. And I think you'd agree. It's amazing how open they are to, you know, people like us, little podcast, right? And, uh, you know, all of a sudden Andrew Walker is talking to you or, you know, Chris Blaha, Kimberly Sustad, whoever. And it's just amazing. It is amazing. Everyone with the network makes themselves so accessible to um, podcasters and fans, which is so great because it feels like such an interactive experience. Totally, totally. Um, So I guess I would love like if you would share like where everyone could find your accounts online just right off the bat. Um, And I'll, of course, put them in the description as well. Of course. So, um, you know, today what we're going to be doing is we're talking about just our favorite Hallmark movies. And so that's sort of like I said, I got that split personality. Um, that's my um, Hallmark movie reviewer. So that's over on Instagram. Um, pretty active over there. There's also the Hallmark movie reviewers dot com. Um, so I do, you know, movie reviews, mostly of all the uh, the the, the rom coms or the non mysteries. Um as well. But then my mystery hat over there, I co-host Hallmark Mysteries and More, which is a podcast. Um, we're on both all the places where you can get a podcast as well as YouTube. And um, there we just talk about mysteries. So while, you know, most of the Hallmark podcasts and uh, folks out there sort of talk about everything, we really just, just focus in on the moves and try to go a little deeper in that world. And then, so yeah, in Instagram, um, and YouTube and everywhere else were just Hallmark mysteries and more. The funny thing about that is a lot of people think we're Hallmark and we get a lot of hate DMs to us, uh, mostly about canceling uh, uh, Mystery 101. And they're like, sorry, we can't do anything about that. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, I experienced the same thing. That's why I changed the name from Hallmark Happening and still live in lattes just because, you know, some people don't realize they don't know. They think that these accounts are like from Hallmark, um, the company itself. So, you know, but if well, we like, could help out, we would. <laughs> and so we've had to put a disclaimer on our podcast saying that we are not affiliated with Hallmark and we are just fans. Um, I was very actually, like I said, I, I also, in addition to talking to all the people, the actors and everything like that, the actual Hallmark executives are really open to talking um, as well. And I thought it was actually super nice because when I first, they said, Hey, we got to talk to you about your name. I was like, Oh no, they're going to make us change our name. And they're like, you know, we really like what you're doing and we want to support you. Um, we aren't going to ask you to change your name, but we just really need you to put this disclaimer in. So I was like, Oh, that's a fairly easy trade-off. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so at the beginning of all of our things, we have to say we are not actually affiliated. I think it's also our initials are HMM. So, you know, there's a, there, there's a little more straight up confusion I can see, but. Yeah, but it all worked out and they oh, are yeah. so nice over there. So that's great. Um, Yeah, well, it's fun. It's such a great community. Um, Social media can be kind of, I guess, toxic um, in some ways, but with Hallmark, and these like made for TV movies, everyone's really, really nice and fun and collaborative. So it's, it's all good things. <laughs> it It is. It's like, you know, cause you think we should be more, you know, mortal enemies cause we have competing podcasts and everything. And, you know, just in general, all the other Hallmark uh, podcasts and YouTube channels or everything. And everybody is, you know, at least my experience has been so supportive and so nice to each other, you know, behind the scenes, you know, we, we had these like little conversations and, you know, try to support each other and help each other out. Cause I think, uh, like I say, it's, it's the exact opposite. It's what I guess social media is ideally supposed to be this place where it could bring people together and we could share good things, you know, as opposed to being that toxicity, um, that a lot of, uh, social media can, can creep into. Yeah, that definitely doesn't seem to um, be commonplace with with the Hallmark world, which is wonderful. Um, or else I don't think we would all do it like we do if if that was the case. But thankfully it's not. Um, but yeah, today we're talking, I guess, about our um top five like Hallmark movies of all time. So it's always fun to like count backwards. I guess we could start with number five. Um, would you like to go first? I will do that. So for mine, it is the birthday wish. The stars uh, Jesse Schramm and Luke McFarlane. Marcus Rosner at this point was a sort of a supporting guy. Um, it's written by Julie Sherman Wolf, who is one of the biggest writers in the Hallmark universe there. And directed by Peter DeLuise, who's directed a ton of uh, a ton of things. So um, this movie, it's basically Jesse Schramm's character goes ahead and, you know, makes the wish that, you know, what would her life have been if she wasn't married and, and going through that whole thing. So that alternate universe, and that's just one of my favorite tropes. So it's just unbelievably cute. It deals with advertising marketing and that's kind of what I do. Um, I just thought it was, you know, just really cutely written and it just makes me feel good when I watch this one. It's a great movie. Um, and I forgot Marcus Rosner was in that, you know, the scene when she thinks he's going to propose to her and she's like uh, destroying all the food and everything in his face during that scene as he's watching her. It's just so right. funny. He's like, what? Yeah. It, like I say, it's just, it's just unbelievably a cute movie. And that's why this year with um, Mystic uh, Christmas, when that came back, I was so excited because Jesse's been kind of, you know, a little MIA and Hallmark lately. And so it was just great having her back because she she should at least be once a year on Hallmark. She's just adorable. And then Duke McFarlane, he just killed it in Catch Me a Few Claws. Uh, he was so good in that. And it was great because I have to say this last couple, the, I forget, was it Muriel's Lighthouse? And then um, it was, was he was in the like the magical Christmas village or whatever, right? I think like they weren't my favorites, and I thought he was maybe a little dialing it in or just mailing it in. And it was so good in seeing him back there. So you know, this goes back to his roots where he was just an absolute fool. 
I was going to say, I think it's said online he had like a new mystery movie coming out with Lindy Greenwood. Did you, I think he- The director of that. And she is so good. She's directed a ton. She's directed pretty much every single mystery out there. Um, but she also was the director of Round and Round um, this past uh, Christmas. So she's just- Awesome. So yeah, I think that's that's gonna be great. We've been waiting for Luke to get a mystery, and I think uh, this one looks like it is gonna suit him quite well. That's awesome. I hope you like it. <laughs> All right. So, what's your fifth favorite? Well, it's so hard to choose when there's like five hundred oh, movies in it five really years. Is. Yeah, there's so many. I like. Uh, I put it was always you, which I feel like everyone has on their list. Of course, but it is so good. Everybody. I mean, yeah, Aaron and Tyler have the best chemistry, and it's like the enemies to lovers concept, except a little bit more interesting since um, it's Tyler's brother that she's engaged to. So that that mixes things up a bit. Yes, it does. Yeah, I'll yeah say, I think course. I'm the only one on the planet who just is like, eh, eh. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not even my That's top funny. ten. Wow. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, it's like, I feel like you have to include a Tyler movie in the top five, at least for me, but I do like when calls the heart. So Aaron's in that. And uh, it's always fun to see like um, her in roles outside of when calls the heart to see how she is as an actress, you know? Oh yeah. She's awesome. She's absolutely awesome. And Dick say, I don't, I, I, I don't fault you for it because like I say, I am on an Island my of my own. Um, out there who, like I say, just doesn't seem to love the movie. Um, I have gotten over the creep factor where I was like, okay, he's a dude hitting on his brother's fiance. And I realize it's not, uh, I mean, it's still a little bit, but it's not that bad. Yeah. So. Hallmark definitely took a chance with that, that people really like it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So of course had to include that. So number four, um, what do you have for number four? Okay. I have Love Strikes Strikes Twice with Katie Finley, Wyatt Nash, um, directed by Jeff Beasley, who was just a, I used had him on your podcast, right? I think. Yes, yeah, he did. yes. Yeah, yeah. He was just all over the place this last holiday with uh, Santa Summit. Um, what was the night in Bethlehem or I forget what the, you know, the Benjamin Ayers and the, uh, Miracle in Bethlehem, or, Pennsylvania. Miracle in Bethlehem. Yeah, that and Never Been Chris. So yeah, he he just kills it. But this, once again, it's another, I, I think it's a theme of mine, like that alternate universe thing where she goes ahead and, you know, wakes up with the going back 16 years earlier. And it's like, oh, is she going to choose her husband again and going through all the things? Um, I also thought Katie Finley was just unbelievably adorable um in this movie uh they, they they show they know how to really be you know witty and have great repertoire so like i guess i just liked it. there's everything in this movie um to like in my opinion so it's a definite must watch if someone hasn't seen it yeah, yeah, I remember that came out a couple of years ago. Katie's really fun. She did the sealed with a list. And I thought that right. she and her co-star did such an amazing job. They were so fun together. Yep. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I hope we see more Katie. She's definitely fun to watch. And she's on kind of a younger generation, so it kind of mixes things up a little bit. Yep. Totally yes. agree. And yeah, and like uh, Katie had this like great little sort of i don't know if it's a bob but just great hair in the movie too I'm a, I'm a big hair guy so when when the uh the lead actress has good hair i'm uh i'm kind of swayed by that so all right so yeah. what did what do you have <laughs> oh you know the last i was having a hard time ranking i feel like i should just they're all unranked they all equal up together um I put a built more Christmas. I really liked it. I loved how they did incorporated like the the period elements and actually showed the film, the black and white part of the film. That was really clever. And of course, Bethany Joylands is just so fun to watch. She's such a good actress and has like a unique, you know, like quality that I don't feel like any of the other actresses have. 
I, I can see that. Um, the uh, now, are you looking forward then to the upcoming Gilded Newport mystery? Because that's another period period piece that the Hallmark is venturing into. Because they haven't really done too many of those. I know it's wild. You know, I actually don't really watch the mysteries. Um, I just can't even keep up Shame with all the Hallmark you. movies. Well, I can't keep. There's so many movies. I don't even. I did uh, not watch all the Christmas movies. I just couldn't keep up. There's you so don't, many. Oh my god, Betsy, don't admit that. Should I not oh admit that? God. No, no. You have to <laughs> say you saw many. them all twice. I saw them all five times. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, but you're. I I totally agree with you. What you're talking about um, with Bethany and her her acting. And Christopher Balaha, that's exactly how I feel about him too. Like there's obviously a lot of really good actors, but Christopher is like, in my opinion, just a next level skilled actor. And that's what, you know, why you see him in things outside of Hallmark as well. He's just pure talent. So that movie I thought just had two of the most talented flat out actors in the Hallmark universe. Absolutely. And obviously they're, you know, super successful outside of Hallmark, which might be why they translate so well to kind of these Hallmark movies, because they are like their careers are like really, you know, big. Like they didn't start in these movies. They did other things and do other thing, things. Yeah. yeah. And the thing with the Biltmore Christmas, too, is it's a movie that really could have just been cheesy and corny if it wasn't handled right, like everything about that movie, would they just nailed. They, and so it ended up being, yeah, a spectacular movie. It was. So, you know, like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was just saying, the, I can't talk. I was going to say the exterior shots were really pretty as well of the mansion. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I was just going to actually hop into my third and say, while we're talking about Bethany Joy Lens, she's in my third ranked movie which is bottled with love um that also has andrew walker in it um is written by kelly bow directed by david weaver and in this movie this has um kind of that uh you know saying how i love those 90s um uh, rom-coms it has a little bit of that you got mail you know the well that one isn't necessarily the co-workers but it's like they kind of work together and then the one finds out that the other, you know, Andrew Walker's character finds out that he's been corresponding. I think they're like texting and emailing this, whatever, and find out that, you know, it's uh, Bethany Joy Lynn's character. And so he knows, but she doesn't know and trying to deal with how they do with that. But I just thought this movie just once again, it's like that old school Hallmark, but just loved it everything about it and i thought that they really had great chemistry sometimes andrew walker i always enjoy him sometimes i just find him a little too you know oh shucks guy next door thing that i sometimes just think he, he exudes more friend vibe than romance to me and in this one i thought it was really good and the chemistry between the two of them were fantastic plus um Bethany Joy Lynn's her some of her uh clothes that she was wearing in this was fantastic. She also had just bangs, which I, I think you can probably agree. Sometimes not always the best look, but she pulled it off fantastic in it. She looked so cute in this movie. She had glasses too, didn't she? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's fun. I like that they did that, how they kind of characterized her, just wardrobe and hair made her stand out from her other characters um, and kind of helped like just the, differentiate the two characters. And it, yeah, that's a great movie. Um, I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's, and it's kind of like I say, it's that old school corny thing of where um, I forget what his name is in the movie, but he throws, you know, he writes down his like little love thing throws it off into the ocean or no she does it because she's like all broken up so she throws her little open heart love letter off into the ocean and then lo and behold of course it lands on you know andrew's uh beach and he just happens to be you know working the family business but um where she's employed so you know that hallmark thing where you kind of have to take some of the uh the reality and 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 uh sort of don't worry about it and just enjoy the movie for what it is. 
which was adorableness. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, I think suspend your disbelief that those things, but you never know, maybe they could happen. <laughs> it, you know, it's funny how you're saying, oh, you have a tough time ranking this. I'll say my top two, I'm just locked and loaded on, and, and that's no problem. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like those ones sort of come and go. And so I, I can feel your pain when you're like trying to narrow it down to like, oh, what's the fourth best Hallmark movie ever? Because, you know, there's other ones that could very easily just hop up on this list. Yeah. And it's like, I have not seen them all by any means because there's so many. I've been recording right. older ones lately and watching them because I've seen, you know, you'll have it on, but you don't actually sit down and watch the whole thing um, and pay attention to it all. So that's, that's something I've been trying to do more of lately. There's a lot of really good older ones. Like I just saw, Oh, totally. Oh gosh. Something with Rachel Lee Cook. It was a winter one um, frozen in love, I think. And that one was really good, but yeah, there's, there's so many. It's so hard to choose. <laughs> in, all right, so you just made me have to uh, turn the, um, you know, I'm going to take my little podcast hosting duties. I'm going to take over from you for a second and ask you, when did you like get into the Hallmark movie? What got you into it? Cause you're saying like, you haven't seen them all, but you obviously developed a passion at some point enough to get a, you know, super popular Instagram and podcast going. So what was your, what's, what's your story to get your Hallmark addiction? <laughs> um, I think I started watching in like 2012, maybe 2013. And then I started oh, watching so you're way old Heart. school. Yeah, I just I just haven't seen them all because there's just so many movies. Um, I'm just it's kind of overwhelming. I mean, you try to if you printed off the list of all the movies in the last 12 years and like watch them all. I mean, there's just so many. Um, but yeah, no, I I've, I've been a fan for years and years, but I just started this about um three years ago, two years, three years ago, I guess so. Yeah. In 2021. Okay. Yeah. Cause I, I was probably about 2018, 19 when I probably like late 2018, when I um, first started getting into them. So I wasn't seeing a lot of the movies new. I was seeing them, you know, on Saturday afternoon or something like that, but okay. All right. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well then kudos to you. I, uh, I I uh, I bow to my to my seniority to the authority on Hallmark to you. <laughs> oh gosh, that's funny uh, seniority. Um, well, I'm trying to think. The first movie I remember really liking was Perfect on Paper with um, Morgan Fairchild. Have you seen that one? No, is she is she a mom in it? No, she's like a, uh, a romance novelist. But she's novelist. an actual. Really, no. Yeah, it's a really good one. It's it's older, but um, it's very very right. good. So I highly recommend that. That should actually be on my list. I as we're talking, I remember that. <laughs> well, my favorite Hallmark Christmas movie, which I kind of avoided the Christmas movies because I think it's kind of its own class here, but is most wonderful time of the year, which I think is like a 2012 ish type one. Um, you know, it's like mm -hmm. one of the very first of that. So they, you know, it wasn't like they had to wait and sort of develop their thing to figure out how to make good movies so they were they've been making them for you know a while they just are making a whole heck of a lot more now than they used to that's right that's a really good movie henry winkler is the cutest man oh, yeah, in that yeah. movie and was it warren christie and yep. brooke brooke burns is that her name i don't know what clearly you like don't this. pay attention to me enough you do know that is my ultimate hallmark crush and oh. <laughs> I figure out a way to get Brooke Burns into everything I ever do. And I just successfully did it with you. So I feel so good. But yes, I've, my <laughs> wife, my kids, everyone knows that if uh, Brooke Burns decided to leave her husband and family for me, I would have to tell my uh, mind to say, you know, it's nice knowing you, but Brooke's a calling. I love Brooke <laughs> That's Burns. so funny. <laughs> she has good hair. She has everything good. I love her. She uh, she she does the game shows now over on Game Show Network, and she's absolutely fantastic. I'm at that, and you know we'll digress a little. We're talking about our favorite movies. You don't really do the um, mysteries, but Gourmet Detective is my favorite mystery, and she stars in that with Dylan Neal. Um, she's absolutely great in that, and so is he. It's great writing and everything. So people wanting to go for the mystery route, 
that's the one I would suggest, even though the rest of the world says Mystery 101 is the best. There is a good chunk of us who say it is the gourmet detective. Oh, okay. So everyone add that to your list. I love, um, did you ever see Cedar Cove? Dylan Neal was in that. Yes. Um, it lasted, what was it, three seasons? That was a really good show. Yep. And Andy McDowell, who's in, uh, in uh, Way Home. That's right. Starting tomorrow. <laughs> yes. Yes, all these connections. Um, Zoom will shut yep. down in about 10 minutes just because it's okay. like a 40-minute timer. But where we, we're number three, is that right? For, three for you. Oh, three for me. Um, okay, so you know what? I'm, maybe I should switch it. You know what? No, I won't. Um, I put Summer Villa. Um, I love that movie. I think you mentioned you love it too. Um, it's yep. another classic, a little bit older Um Victor Webster is so funny in that just, and then you feel like you're in France, even though I'm sure they weren't, but it felt like it, Canada and Canada, but they did a great job. Um, it's just, they have such great chemistry. I just love the storyline. It's kind of like easy breezy, you know? Totally agree. In fact, I thought they're in France too. And I was writing a great destination, um, blog post and I had that on there and I said, you know, the great South of France. And then I discovered it was Canada. I was like, I'm crushed. Oh, they did a All great right. job. You really felt like it. Oh. that was a beautiful um, cottage, which I feel like it might have been the same one they used in the wedding cottage. I don't know. I could be wrong, but. Probably. They reuse them all the time. All That's right. I'll nice. jump to my number two, which is wedding every weekend. And like I said, my one and two just are completely different league for me. I love everything about this movie. Kimberly Sustad can do no wrong. Paul Campbell is just absolutely fantastic. Just the whole premise of the movie where they, you know, start as sort of like hey we're going to this wedding again how about we just go again and they slowly evolve into the dating because that's one of the things hallmark usually does it takes like a weekend and then like you know two days later oh i love you i want to spend the rest of my life where this one really had a chance to progress and it was great it also was the first hallmark that had a uh, same-sex marriage in it so that, that was kind of cool for being uh you know a little bit sort of starting to lay the groundwork of the diversity and inclusive inclusiveness so this movie, just fantastic. Anytime it's on, I'll watch it. Yeah, yeah. Um, for a while, we were playing it quite a bit. I feel like it kept, I kept seeing it on. Um, but Kimberly and Paul, my goodness, what a duo. All right, you're number two. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. What is my number two? Um, I'm going to go with The Wedding Veil Unveiled, just because Italy is so pretty and Autumn's outfits are amazing. And it's so fun to like see the story like um revealed the whole story behind that and it's so interesting you have to like watch it all or else you'll kind of miss what's going on as far as like the backstory to the veil the paolo bernardini is so cool um yeah just such a cool movie if you're talking destination movies all right yeah you did you, you go back to back destination all right well mm -hmm. i'm gonna hop to my number one which is as i said as foreshadowing it is summer villa and it is not even close this was my gateway into hallmark i still think it is the gold standard there is absolutely nothing wrong with this movie it is a perfect hallmark movie and like you said victor webster stud there's the uh scene where he comes out of the pool which i share on his birthday as a gift to the universe every year because he looks like such a stud there but hillary burton just so good it was her last hallmark which is unfortunate but even like the kid kids are always so bad and the kid in it is good like you said the destination was good great romance a little frenemy to you know to love her thing so everything about this movie is fantastic it is. It's so funny. The Zaza Zoo line. Uh, I love when they have gone on their little like date thing at the beginning. And then he calls his sister and he says something like, don't set me up with any more of your uptight friends. And then he's on speaker and she goes, I'm not uptight. I'm a good time gal. And then he's like, right. on speaker. And the whole scene's just so funny. Or when, or when he's hitting on the wrong girl at the, uh, the bar when they're supposed to be going on their date. Yikes. He's got the, wrong, the wrong girl. Yeah. So funny. Chef Cupid. So funny. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's a great movie. Highly recommended. <laughs> that's the only one so far we've both shared. So unless your number one's one that's on my list, we that is the only agreed upon top movie. So what's your number one? Well, I liked Moonlight in Vermont with Lacey Chabert and Carlo Marx. Um, I feel like it's one of the few that Lacey is like really sassy in. And she's so funny. And just like the whole 
premise is so awkward and all the side characters are really great um and just our chemistry with carlo marx is so funny just everything about it i just think it's the cutest movie awesome that's yeah that's always that's why we watch hallmark movies right that's right that's right it's it makes you feel good and it's just a happy place awesome Yeah, well, we got through all five, although I'm sure we, we could have gone even more in depth. The Zoom didn't have a timer. <laughs> I, I do want to give a quick nod to round and round because that may be cracking my top five. It's just too new that I couldn't let it in, but round and round is so good. So that 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 is knocking on the door. Okay. Okay. Well, maybe you'll have to do like a Christmas themed one sometime Yeah. and you'll have to include that. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Well, Well, Betsy, thank you for, I'm sorry. thank you very much for inviting me. This was a blast. I always love sharing and it's great to hear about uh, what some other people's are. Cause you remind me of some movies that I haven't seen in a bit. And I'm like, eh, I think I'm going to go watch that now. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Um, it's been fun talking and you do so much on your account and it's fun to watch. So I appreciate your time today. Well, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I appreciate you working with me rescheduling. No, that's okay. And when my internet crashed, <laughs> it happens. it does a lot sometimes for me, um, but I hope you have a great day. Thank you. all right thanks betty i'll talk to you later Bye. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can be notified of all the new episodes. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you so much for listening to the Love and Lattes podcast. Have a great day.